Hey Internet, it's Pixel Geek here with another presentation to make the web beautiful. Today's presentation is all about my own personal web design process. Uh, this was inspired by a fellow Redditor at the subreddit Web Design, and he's wondering about other people's processes. And so I promised him uh, that I would do one and post it here. So, Deep Throat 9. Here we go. First, I would gather all the assets from the client, um, all the logos, the imagery, any videos, um, any colors that they're already using or help them understand which colors to use, um, and any copy that they would already have. So after you get that, I consider that all my Lego pieces. And you want to make sure that even when building um, a Lego model, you want to have all the pieces laid out in front of you so you can start going to town. It's not really that good to move forward with some missing pieces and then add them in later. It doesn't really help the flow. Sure, that happens from time to time with all these projects, but um, if you can, get all the assets from the start. Um, next, I would research other websites. I would go to like um, the uh, awards or awards.com, cssawards.net, or thebestdesigns.com. And this is um, where I start to find inspiration. Even um, a subreddit called uh, web underscore inspiration helps. Um, anywhere to get your mind racing on different styles and growing tr trends that are happening on the internets today. And once you find something that connects with um, your client's brand, that's when you would start to draw wireframes. Using regular pen and paper, just start going to town with um, some boxes and trying to visualize um, in your head how, how the website would work. So that's what I would do. I would just put on headphones and then just start zoning out and going to town and trying to figure out where interactions are. And remember, wireframes is just the, um, it's just the blueprint. So you can always change it around um, and, you know, just zone out, find a wireframe that really works for the project. And you can always change it, you know. If the client doesn't like the wireframes, then do another one. Just, you know, be creative. After that, um, next slide, after that, uh, create a mock. And I really feel it's easy to create a mock with in webflow.com. It's a super, super duper tool that I really love. And Instead of creating a mock in Photoshop, I would cre create a mock in Webflow because at the same time, I'm oh, at the same time I'm creating a mock, I'm actually coding it. I mean, I mean, it's already being coded because I have all the CSS here. And for example, I want to use um, this this font, this Google font with this color, and I'm already stylizing with CSS, and it's being coded on the fly. And I'll show you more about that later, okay? So this is one example of one of the websites I'm doing right now, okay? Um, after that, refine it. I mean, just keep messing with your um, design until it works, um, until it makes sense to you and the client. And once you're ready to show it off to the client, um, give them a, a test link or a screenshot and say, here you go. If they approve it, then that's when I would start coding up the prototype. And again, this is where Webflow really, really kicks ass. Because um, right here, this button right here, export the code. Right there. All the code, it, HTML5, CSS3, all there for you. Just download it as a zip, and then refine the code and put it into your next uh, into your code editor. I use Dreamweaver and um, that's when I put my jQuery in for more interactions. Um, I start messing with more stuff uh, just to make sure that it's right and where I can compress the code, minify the code if needed. Um, just do everything I can to refine it. And then after I do that, I cross-browser test it. I use uh, browserstack.com to test it on IE8 and Opera and all the other major browsers out there. Yes, test for IE8 because there are people who still use it. And even though it hurts, just do it because that's what makes you a web designer. 
making sure that the web looks beautiful for everyone, even those who really don't know how to upgrade their, their internet experience, okay? And after that, after it's tested and all the links work and everything and you get it approved by the client, launch it live and you're done. But of course, you're not really done because then look back and see where you could have done something better in your, in your process. Well, maybe there's a better tool out there. Maybe you could have talked to the client better in some way or um, help the client um, visualize your wireframe. There's always something to improve upon. So learn what you've already done and see where you can improve upon it and then learn even more. Because once you stop learning, that's the day you get old and no one wants to get old, okay? So never stop learning. Um, and that's my quick, in a nutshell, web design process to make the web beautiful. If you have any comments or have any um, suggestions on how to improve my process, let me know in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe if you like these type of videos. Talk to you later.